What's up guys? We are back with another NECA Toys review, another NECA Toys Ninja Turtle review. And right after I just got done saying that I didn't find Bebop and Rocksteady, well, I found Bebop and Rocksteady. I got the last set at a store, so I am finally able to take a look at these guys. And I cannot express just how excited I am to tear into these, because frankly, these might be the ones I've wanted the most out of the entire line so far. So we've got these guys here in the standard packaging for this line as far as the two packs go. So you've got the figures there in the big window. You've got some cartoon style artwork. You've got product shots on the side. And then the back of the package has more product shots and then a little bit of a write up. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. All right, and here we go out of the package, our Bebop and our Rocksteady figures from NECA Toys. Without a doubt, some of the most anticipated and easily the most sought after toys right now as of, well, this recording. They are definitely going to be the must-have new toys of the, the holiday season for sure because, well, everybody's going crazy for them. I mean, I, I myself kind of got into the frenzy going out hunting, doing the whole deal, and of course I did find them. And I'd say that they're going to live up to the hype here. There's definitely some stuff to talk about when it comes to these figures because they are, well, they are so different. They are unique across this particular line. They do have some things that are kind of weird, but they, they undoubtedly, I mean, come on, they undoubtedly look really cool. And when it comes to this line, you know what I'm going to say, it's all about the looks. And I think that we've got a winner here. So let's take a look at each one of these individually. We're going to start with Bebop and then we'll get over to Rocksteady. So everyone's favorite mutant warthog, Bebop. This is probably my favorite of the two. And that seems to be the thing for me personally. I've always kind of preferred Bebop's look. Something about him is just quintessential kind of punk type of look, the, the mohawk, the sunglasses, but he is a really, really cool action figure. Of course, I'm not taking anything away from Rocksteady here. It's just more of a personal preference. So let's look and see how this move, this guy moves around. He is kind of interesting. Both of these figures are a little limited in some ways. They are certainly not the most dynamic figures ever. In some ways, their design kind of precludes them from being really, really dynamic based in this particular I guess, look and feel for the line. So you've got a head that can look up a pretty good bit, and then it goes down a pretty good bit. You've got some tilt side to side, and then of course you've got rotation, but it, because he's kind of a jutting forward type of look, you've got mostly just kind of swivel is what it ends up being. He does have an articulated jaw, which is pretty fantastic. That's a, a thing that both figures share, so you can look inside of his big piggy mouth. The arms go out about that far. They're not the greatest range of motion, but I don't really have any issues with that, just based on the character. They do rotate at the shoulder, but he has these shoulder pads, so you will have to watch that. They only go so far before they sort of, just sort of stop. You've got a bicep swivel in there. You've got double jointed elbows on these guys, and they go up pretty far, more than 90 degrees for sure. And then you've got, you've got hinges and you've got rotation at the wrist. I will say that for my figure in particular, I did need to heat him up quite a bit just to get him moving. I didn't think I was gonna break anything, so don't get me wrong there. I, was, I wasn't in the, in the area of, oh, this is gonna snap right away just because I'm looking at it wrong. It just needed to be sort of nudged in the right direction. So you might wanna err on the side of caution and just heat him up. Once I've done that, I haven't really had too many problems, but I did, I did feel the need to do it. He has a diaphragm cut. It really only amounts to being kind of a torso swivel though, because he's so fat, well, thick, chunky, that he can kind of bobble forward and backward and side to side, but he really just rotates. The legs on this guy, they can go about that far out. They kick forward pretty far though. For such a bulky character, that's pretty good. They go backwards a good bit. You've got a thigh cut in there as well. You do have double jointed knees. He has big fat thighs, so they kind of stop things a little bit, but they go all the way that they can. And then you've got rotating ankles. And I don't know if it's my particular figure or not. I'm still kind of working on these joints. I don't know that they go too far, but you have a little bit of rocker action on these guys. And then there is a hinge in there, but it, because he has like the big, you know, kind of high tops going here, the backs of the shoes hit the ankles right away. So they stop. And then the inside of the shoe hits the ankle kind of right away and it stops as well. So I'm going to try to play with that more, but it doesn't seem like it moves too, too far. So he is a little bit limited. Like I'm not going to sugarcoat it. He doesn't move necessarily as well as say like the foot soldiers comparing another villain because they are, they are pretty mobile, but he is a beefy, chunky figure and he still moves pretty well. My only real thing to mention is that you might want to heat him up 
just to be on the safe side because, again, I did feel the need to do so. Of course, it goes without saying because, well, I already said it in one way or another. This figure for me is all, and I cannot stress that enough, it is all about the looks. That's not to say that I want him to be a statue. I want him to be able to move, and he can move. But this guy is all about the aesthetics. It's all about this particular style, the very cartoon cell shading type of look, very indicative of the original Wave 1 Turtles type of look uh, that we've gotten so far. So he very much looks like he kind of jumped right out of the show. As far as I'm concerned, this is this is my Bebop. Even, even though I have a huge, huge fondness for the vintage toy line, when I think of Bebop, I always think of this. And it's not like they're too, too far off. This guy's just, well, he's just more cartoony. And I think NECA did a really good job. And when I mentioned that it has kind of that like cell shaded type of look, it's mostly this kind of light and shadow thing. So just like the Wave 1 Turtles have a dark and then kind of a darker look to them, Bebop has a tan and a more tan on the backside. So he's got a little bit of a lightness going on from the front as far as skin tone goes. And then on the back, there's this kind of line that cuts him right down and he kind of gets cast in his shadow. And I really like that. I think it's kind of cool. It definitely adds a bit of flair to him. And beyond that, the sculpt on this guy is just pretty solid. I'm a big fan of it. I think he looks really good. He's also quite large. These guys are really the seven inch figures that are touted in the seven inch line. The turtles definitely aren't seven inches. The foot soldiers aren't exactly. These guys are big, beefy figures. And I'm gonna do a comparison to the Playmates classics that came out years ago, because for a long time, those have been the only real collector grade Bebop and Rocksteady. And even those are still kind of dwarfed by, uh, by these figures. But I think we've got an all around fantastic sculpt. I love the way these guys look. I love the use of chains. This one over here is a little bit, annoying maybe is the best way to say it because it kind of gets stuck in the joint from time to time because it's actually a free-floating piece that's stuck on with some hooks that are sculpted in to the arm so i may actually put a maybe a little dollop of glue in there just to keep them from falling out but i do like them i, I prefer this over chains that are sculpted on they may be a little bit more annoying but i think they look cooler and then you've got the chains for the belt you've got the big turtle shell shoulder pads he's got grenades and bullets that wrap him and he's got of course you know the the high top shoes down there which look pretty fantastic but it's all about this the the look and the feel and he has that nice matte finish that the turtles do and it just works it very much gives you it gives you that cartoon vibe and it looks like he jumped right out of the screen but to really hammer that home it's all about the head sculpt it's all about the tremendous amount of business that's just going on upstairs on this guy and i think that NECA just really knocked it out of the park not only does he have an articulated jaw, he's just got a lot of detail up here. You've got the huge tusks that come out. You've got the big red tongue. You've got the nose ring, the smaller teeth, the fantastic punk style uh, sunglasses with the slits in there. And then of course you've got his big purple mohawk that runs back to the ponytail. He does have the, uh, the kind of bone necklace that dangles around and it's a floating piece. So you've got that there. But what's really weird about this and honestly kind of freaky you, the the sunglasses are of course a separate piece which makes perfect sense but they move so they they're pegged into the side of his head and you can pop these open and you've got the weirdest looking uh, eyes for bebop i don't know if that's normal or not i've seen other pictures of him already and he looks exactly this way with one kind of big pupil and one kind of small pupil I don't know what's going on there, but it looks pretty freaky without the glasses on. But when he's got those on, you cannot tell me that this guy doesn't look like he jumped right out of the cartoon. I'd say, for my money, this head sculpt is exactly everything that I wanted it to be. It's, it's truly the cornerstone, for lack of a better term, for this figure. Now, for Rocksteady here, things are similar but kind of different. And I'm not really sure how much these guys share parts. I'm assuming that there has to be some. There's no way they don't share at least a little bit. I just don't know what it is. Probably the arms, maybe some of the inner construction as well, which we'll talk about because, of course, I did just say inner construction because there's definitely some stuff going on that you can't outright see with the naked eye on this guy. So you've got a head that can look up a little bit, not much, but he looks down really, really good. Uh, you've got some tilt action, so you can go side to side. I'm not sure exactly what kind of joint this is. It feels like it might be a double ball peg. Uh, I'm not too sure. It could be a ball hinge as well. I'm just not, not sure. I can't see anything in there. And then you've got what essentially amounts to swivel at the head. The arms go out, not 90 degrees, but they go pretty good. They can rotate all the way around. You've got your bicep swivel. You've got double jointed elbows on this guy. And then you've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. Nothing really crazy there. He does 
however, have a little bit of hindrance when it comes to his mid-range, when it comes to his torso, because there's not a lot going on here. He can twist a little bit, but I feel like I'm gonna break him because there is a strap that runs across. So this guy right here, this strap here, connects underneath. It connects down here and then it wraps over his body and connects on the backside. So eventually it's gonna kind of stop him a little bit. And the shirt and like his, uh, his gut here is actually a piece that sits over top of the buck. So I'm not sure what piece is there. It could be the same piece that's uh, Bebop's torso. So he does twist some, but he doesn't really have anything forward, backward, or side to side. So he is a little bit hindered, but at the same time, he's supposed to be kind of a big, bulbousy, fat rhino. So he shouldn't be able to really like bend over and touch his toes, but he does kind of lack a little articulation there. Legs go out basically the same as Bebop's. They don't go all the way, but they go a pretty good bit for a chunky figure. You can kick forward pretty good and then they go backwards a little bit. You do have a thigh cut to twist in there. You've got double jointed knees, about the same as Bebop's. And then you've got rotation at the ankle or boot cut. You've got a full rocker down here and then you've also got hinges. So the one area where I have my most concern with Bebop really is the ankles, but that is, uh, an, that's kind of answered with Rocksteady. And then he kind of trades that a little bit for having a bit of an issue when it comes to, comes to that big belly. Now, when it comes to Rocksteady from a design standpoint, I think, just like Bebop, they pretty well killed it. I do think that he is maybe a little bit more simplistic in his design than Bebop, but that's just the way it is. Bebop has a lot of things going on. He's got a lot of doodads hanging all over him. Rocksteady's a little bit different because he only has kind of a tank top on, and then he has, you know, the bandolier with some bullets. He does have a grenade hanging off of his... Uh, off of his strap there. He's got the knife on his back. It's not removable or anything. You've got a grenade on his belt over here. You've got the turtle shell over here on his belt as well. But he is in just sort of standard pants, you know, kind of cargo pants from the waist down with some boots. But it very much looks like him. I do think he definitely looks a little bit beefier than Bebop just because of the fact that he has, again, this kind of outer piece on him. So you can kind of see through here. You can see the, the body underneath. And then if you wanted to, you can try to pry this up a little bit. And you can feel that it's a little bit of a rubbery, rubbery piece of a material that sits over top of the buck to kind of fill him out a little bit. But then it also gives you the idea that he kind of has a gut that sticks out of his shirt, which is very true to the show. And I, I just think that they captured the look really well. Again, more of that uh, filled line work with the, the black lines that run through the wrinkles and then the musculature. And then you've got the, the light and the darkness on the backside to give you that shadow, that cartoon, almost sort of cell shaded look, which I think is implemented uh, pretty well here. But just like with Bebop, when it comes to this figure, when it comes to this character, when you think of Rocksteady, you think, well, I think of anyway, you think of this humongous rhino head. And just like with Bebop, this is probably my favorite aspect of this figure. Not just because, again, he has, you know, an articulated jaw just like Bebop has, because they both share that same similarity. It's, it's just the look. I think they did a fantastic job of translating this m monstrous rhino head into figure form. You've got those really stark yellow eyes with the black pupils, the light gray horns against the darker gray skin. The one thing that I'm kind of curious about is why they didn't give him the helmet. That was always a very rock steady thing, but he also kind of goes either way. It's not like it's set in stone as to what the look is, so I'm not exactly beat up by it. It's more of a more of a curiosity. I'm perfectly fine with him the way he is, but I think I think this is rock steady through and through. You you can't you can't convince me otherwise that this is not the most cartoon accurate depiction of the character we've ever gotten. Now, as far as accessories goes, this might be where things fall a little bit short. Well, at least in comparison to say the turtles, because well, those are stacked, but they have kind of identical sets of stuff for each figure. So you've got a set of hands and you've got a set of guns that just happen to fit each particular figure. So you've got trigger finger right hand which I've already got on them. You've got gripping open palm uh, left hands, which I've already got on them. You've got a non-trigger finger gripping left hand for each figure. And then you've got a gripping right hand, just the reverse of this for each figure. Of course, they're done up in their respective skin tones. And then they have two guns each. So you've got this guy here, the little pistol. We've seen these with foot soldiers, so none of these guns are new. So you've got the, the gun here, the, the little pistol, and then you've got the big blaster rifle here, which I do really like this. I mean, you definitely see them use both of these in the show, so it's not like they aren't unique to them or anything. And then uh, this, again, is, is something that we've seen with the foot soldiers. So you get four guns, and then you get eight more hands for a total of 12 hands. 
But there is one other accessory that they can share, and that would be one of the communicators that the bad guys use. And this time around, though, it has the actual NECA figure shredder on the screen. And here is a quick comparison, like I mentioned, to the Playmates Classics figures, which they weren't exactly going for 100% cartoon accurate by any means, but they definitely leaned towards the cartoon look. And there is a night and day difference between aesthetics, size, even, and I always thought these guys were pretty big, but these guys are even, you know, kind of dwarfed by, by the NECA stuff. So there's, there's no question here. There is a new king when it comes to slightly more detailed Bebop and Rocksteady figures, and, uh, I don't know, I'm not taking these off my shelf because I still have kind of a fondness for those. Those were the start of what I thought was going to be a really cool line at the time. That, of course, died a terrible death. But you can see there's just a, a huge difference between style, size, scale, articulation, all of that stuff from these now pretty antiquated figures to the new stuff that NECA is giving us. And of course, here is another comparison with some other figures from the same line. So you've got a couple foot soldiers on the outside, you've got Shredder on the inside, and then a couple turtles, just to give you an idea of scale. And I have heard some folks kind of maybe slightly complaining about the scale of these figures because they are they are quite large and frankly I'm very happy with that but there's a lot of there's a lot of instances in the cartoon where Bebop and Rocksteady are shorter than Shredder but for me I don't like that I I find that they should be bigger I mean come on they're giant mutated evil creatures. They should be hulking. They should be bigger. So I think that for my money, for my toy shelf, these look damn good next to each other. And they definitely look bigger than the turtles. And they look fantastic next to Shredder. And they definitely look a little more imposing than the foot soldiers. So there is a lot going on when it comes to mixing and matching these particular figures. But you have a lot of varying degrees of size you know, kind of bulk, height, the whole deal, so you can make some very layered setups when it comes to these figures. So overall, these figures are, honestly, they're they're pretty great. I, I will be very, very surprised if these don't end up on some kind of top 10 list for me this year. Are they perfect? Of course not. There rarely is such a figure, but these are pretty damn good. They definitely have their limitations, and it's really just kind of in the articulation. They are bigger, bulkier, and they kind of suffer because of that in some respects. But it's not really a huge deal. They they certainly aren't out there doing flips or anything like that. I think that they will serve their purpose quite well. But really, like I said, it's all about the looks with these guys, and I really think NECA did a stellar job in making these guys look like they jumped right out of the screen. And that's what I wanted, it's what I needed, it's what I have been craving when it comes to these figures, and I'm really glad that they are finally part of my collection. They're going to go really well against my array of foot soldiers, Shredder, Krang, and now eight different NECA turtles in the cartoon style. So I would urge you to get out there and look for them, do whatever you can to get a hold of these figures because they are, well, we already know that they're the hardest things to find right now and they're going to be scooped up nonstop. So that's gonna do it for this look at the NECA Toys Bebop and Rocksteady two pack. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.